<laughs> we were coming out of the tournament rally at the time when that picture was taken. And uh, we were actually sitting right by Trump. So uh, we were so we were so excited that we were in this world that we've been watching through the Internet. And to be part of it was super thrilling. So when I saw Jim Acosta with the rest of the reporters uh, in the back, um, I didn't have any anger. I didn't hate him. I was just thinking, oh, my God, this guy from TV. So I was like, Jim! Hey, Jim! And he finally said hello. And um, uh, so I put up my phone, and, uh, and I took up a, a picture, and he was even doing the thumb up. So then he got up, and then he's like, may I take a picture of you? And then my sister, she had the pepper at the time, and she just threw it at me, and I'm like, okay, I'll hold it. And I did my duck lips. <laughs> Yvette Munoz is our guest, and she goes by your mama's chest hair, yo mama's chest hair. This happened a few months ago, but it's popped back up on the news, and I thought, hey, we ought to get her on. Acosta of CNN mocks Hispanic woman for Trump Pepe doll and Infowar shirt. And that picked up a lot of news then, but I thought, why not get her back on because uh, she it, it's, it's been it's been recirculated out on the web and you know they demonized this Pepe the Frog the uh, the creator of it told people use it I don't care who you are use it but now uh, he sues you uh, if you even um, even basically even talk about it I guess or, or just even hold up a frog so I guess he might sue you that's how the left operates now they just think they own total reality uh, but there she is wearing uh, our uh, anti anti fascist shirt because they really are fascist and i thought we would uh, get yo mama's chest hair i guess that's saying mama's got the chest hair where are the men today you've got a very uh, interesting background for, uh, for what you're doing i want to find out what attracted you to the info war and what's happened since this and some of the new breaking news but uh yo mama's chest hair that's what she wants to go by uh, <laughs> tell us about that nickname first uh, well, it originated at, uh, from a movie, Mean Girls, uh, when the goth girl, you know, I keep forgetting her name, but the goth girl, she was wearing a sweater. This guy asked her, hey, nice sweater. Where'd you get, uh, what's it made of? And her response was, from, it's made out of your mama's chest hair. And so that's where your mama's chest hair was born. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Uh, tell, us, tell us about, this is back in the news because you've been converting some of your friends uh, f uh, from being uh, anti-Trump, being pro-Trump, and including some folks that I'm told, uh, you know, are, are, are basically eligible uh, for DACA. So tell us about that. Yeah, that's actually my cousin. Um, him and I are very close, and uh, what happened is once he found out that I voted for Trump, he was very devastated, and he just, you know, he kept repeating to me that I betrayed him. Um, at first, he was... Um, like I said, we were all being indoctrinated by uh, Univision, um, and he thought it was just the end of the world for him. So unable to debate at the time, because I actually got red-pilled after the elections, and I found out about InfoWars after the elections as well. And um, once I was able to tell him what was going on, um, I, I got him to sit with me because he was getting a little bit upset. And like I said, he was even threatening me at some point. Um, and I finally got to sit with him and he was willing to listen. Unlike some of my other cousins who just got communication with me, he sat there and I was debunking every fake news I could. Everything he was concerned about, I was helping him out. Um, and then from there on, we resumed our relationship. And I even talk about it in the article that I kept going to his soccer games where people will demonize me for being a Trump supporter and a Mexican. And um, he finally changed 100% his mind because um, after the State of the Union speech, Trump had mentioned that um, he was willing to give a path to citizenship to the DACA recipients if we only built the wall first, which is not a bad deal at all. And once I told him a little bit about that, and he he actually went and see for himself that he, Trump actually did say that in, in the State of the Union, he was like, "What are we waiting for? I want to build the wall. I'll go. I'll go. Let me let me get hired, and I'll build the wall." <laughs> Wow. So um, we, I did have an incident in January uh, when the government shutdown happened. And I was a little bit upset because they were doing all this for 
illegals when uh, we have other issues of our own. And I kind of got my, I was very angry at the time. And so my anger took over me and I, I put a horrible post out there where I was saying that I was going to deport uh, the DACA's parents if the DACA people wouldn't send an email or something to get the government running again. And it backfired. <laughs> but um, my cousin, he stood up there and he was trying to defend me because he knows that I can say anything, you know, because I'm all about freedom of speech. Sure, so, sure, absolutely. Uh, and, and people get mad. People right. say things tongue and shake and, you know, make a point. But when the left does it, it's all cute. And, 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 and okay, when we do it, oh, we're all demonized or stuff taken out of context. But here's the thing. The Democrats mm -hmm. want a giant controlled group that they can keep disenfranchised. And so did the Republican establishment. Trump's changing that. And like you said, my listeners are like, wait, Trump's going back when he said that we would give a path to people that aren't criminals who are, you know, in DACA and maybe by criminal who, 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 who've really been here for a while, who are contributing and, 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 and who haven't committed serious crimes. That's what Trump said during the campaign. He said, listen, the so-called DACA program now just lets everybody in because if we have a serious one that actually vets people, I'm all about making a path to citizenship or coming here easier. We need this. Trump's like, I hire all sorts of people, you know, that come here legally from all over the world to work in my hotels and golf courses. He just said, you just can't have totally open borders. And, and then you got Latin America collapsing. Mexico's built a fence and a wall. And so, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the common sense. And I, that's why I couldn't believe he got attacked by conservatives thinking he'd gone back on what he said when he hadn't. And then a lot of leftists just ignored the fact. But as soon as he said that, the Democrats said, no, we want no borders at all. Well, that's just completely insane. I agree. I agree 100 percent. And that's the funny thing. See, I used to live in Mexico and I remember the elections. Um, my very, very first rally was going to Vicente Fox. And we actually thought that this guy was going to change the world, but he was just a typical politician like the rest of them. And the way they do the campaigns in Mexico is um, they always have to give something to the people so they can vote for them. So people are in the middle and then you got the two politicians, right, two different politicians. And and then the people are like, which is, what are they giving out there? Oh, they're giving buttons. Okay, what are they giving out there? Uh, they're giving hats. Okay, let's go with the guy that gives out the hat. They, they don't even look at the policies. And same thing here. The Democrats are giving so many aid to illegals. And I've witnessed this. And um, that's why they want, they're brainwashed by the Democrats because the Republicans, it's all about you earn for, you earn everything that you have. And Democrats are like, let's feed the ducks. So one day they don't know how to feed themselves. Exactly. And then meanwhile, it's like folks say, don't give people fish, teach them how to fish. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Trump knows we've been artificially shut down. We've been artificially managed to, to make the economy start shutting down. He just says, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm not even giving you your freedom. I'm just going to get out of your way and work to make it more fair for jobs here. And we see it already in a year and a half turning around. And that's why the Democrats are panicking. They're going crazy. Uh, and then I'm just you know, really concerned, though, because like you said, most people know what's going on and a lot of hispanic americans get it a lot of the people that are immigrants here that came here legally illegally they get it but a certain percentage mainly it's white liberals that attack me and others but there's a certain percentage of hispanic folks that are buying into this lie that really think trump and, and white people are out to get them and and, and that's why I'm, i appreciate your courage because i've talked to other hispanic listeners and mexican listeners who have had their fathers and mothers ostracized them, have had whole families turn against them because they said, no, Trump didn't say all Mexicans were criminal. He said a wide open border. The border's got a lot of crime on it. Criminal Americans go to Mexico. We know that. Doesn't mean all Americans are criminals. And, 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 and so they'll defend and say, no, Trump didn't say that. Show me the clip. And then their own family says, I'll kill you, basically. And I've had listeners tell me this. I've gotten letters. And so it sounds like you've gone through that. You're saying, do you go to soccer games wearing a Make America Great Again? Because you said you like go to <laughs> soccer games and they get in your face. What happens? No, I did not take my, any of my uh, MAGA gear. Um, I just go like a regular civilian. I, I go and support my cousin whenever he's playing games. Uh, I try to leave the politics out of everything, but if somebody comes to me and tries to talk to me about politics, then I'll respond to them. Most of the time, they, they hate it because they hate the truth. But guess what? Liars hate the truth, and that's Sure, that's sure. The Who's the pretty girl with you there in, in the American flag outfit? 
<laughs> That's my sister. Um, we're very close. She's the one that red pilled me. And thanks to her, we found out about you. <laughs> um, she started red pilling me about the spirit cooking. And, you know, with the algorithms, it led us to InfoWars because we never knew what InfoWars was. And then we saw you there just yelling the news. And we're like, wow, this guy... He is a little too passionate. <laughs> but then uh, you kept giving out sources, and that's what really matters. Uh, we checked out the sources, uh, all the articles that you were talking about, and that's the funny part is that in the mainstream media on TV, they just give you tiny information where they can still uh, get it out of context. But the only way to get the real news is by reading, and that's why um, I follow you so much because I, I do believe that you have uh the right sources well you and your sister are awesome maybe we should get you as auxiliary reporters to go out and do some work with them maybe we should try to hire you i need to raise some money to do that <laughs> i didn't plug this hour infowarstore.com but when we come back we'll do five more minutes with you i want to invite you back for a full hour to take calls soon uh and invite your sister on as well uh but uh, i want to ask you about jim acosta calling you a white supremacist i mean i think it's pretty obvious that you're not even you know i mean you're a very pretty lady you're not white he's saying calling you a white supremacist yo mama's chest hair is here with us and i'm gonna get her and her sister down here to be in studio with us the next few weeks uh she's a she's a firecracker she didn't want to com complain on air but they got death threats you name it being pro-trump going back over a year ago so just recap what that was like for, and, and and like talk about your sister's husband that was actually first domino in the family so we're going to get him down here, too, and celebrate people that are trailblazers that go against the propaganda and then realize the truth, which is a beautiful thing. It's the leftist brainwashing of people. It's not skin color. It's the brainwashing that is the problem. And that's why they think with the demographics they're going to do that. But if we actually take action, we can win. But, but, but just get back to Acosta calling you a white supremacist. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny because uh, <laughs> we were coming out of the Trump rally at the time when that picture was taken, and uh, we were actually sitting right by Trump. So uh, we were so we were so excited that we were in this world that we've been watching through the internet, and to be part of it was super thrilling. So when I saw Jim Acosta with the rest of the reporters uh, in the back. Um, I didn't have any anger. I didn't hate him. I was just thinking, oh, my God, this guy from TV. So I was like, Jim, hey, Jim. And he finally said hello. And um, uh, so I put up my phone, and I, and I took up a, a picture, and he was even doing the thumb up. So then he got up, and then he's like, may I take a picture of you? And then my sister, she had the pepper at the time, and she just threw it at me. And I'm like, okay, I'll hold it. And I did my duck lips. <laughs> And uh, then I knew he was going to put it up on Twitter right away. It just gave me that impression. And um, at the time, like I told you, because all this went down about the dreamers and that they were threatening, I had to take down all my social media. But I went back on Twitter. I opened my own Twitter account just like so I could respond to uh, Jim Acosta. And it kind of backfired because, well, I'm a Mexican descendant. <laughs> oh, look, there's a picture. <laughs> Well, you know, the claim that uh, Pepe is white supremacist because a few white supremacists used it, everybody was using it. It's just, it's like you can take any symbol. Put Santa Claus next to a white supremacist. Now we got to ban Santa Claus? <laughs> right. It was just a meme. So a meme, you just put a little bit of truth in there and it's supposed to be funny. But um, that's how it all started because Hillary was declaring war on this Pepe, saying that it's some dark lord and we worship this thing like cultists <laughs> i so forgot that like... yeah i guess even we worship <laughs> it i forgot that yeah yeah and i'm like oh god no way did she really say that so we started i guess you can say trolling and we're like yeah pepe pepe we adore this god but now it means a lot more um to me uh pepe is it's it's very similar to the story of moses uh remember when moses was trying to free the people from egypt and there were the plagues being sent and the one one of the plagues was the frogs so now it, it feels like this is worldwide everybody is identifying with uh with Keck or, or Pepe, as you want to call it. And and now it feels like we are helping Trump, who's chosen by God. We're going to help him free the rest of the people. We are that plague, and we're coming hard. <laughs> Ooh, it's like the frogs into Egypt. Wow. I never right. heard that. Is that is, is, did you come up with that? 
<laughs> uh, that's how I see it. I, I, I haven't heard it, but that's how I see it because I'm not sure. Uh, even in No, the no, that's what I'm I saying. You created that allegory. That's powerful. Pepe <laughs> are the frogs invading Egypt. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> All right. Well, you're awesome. I look forward to meeting you and your sister and her husband here in studio. So as soon as you want to come down here. Um, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, you're awesome. Yeah, next Thursday and Friday, I'm going to go to a family event. I won't be here. But any other time, get you guys flown down here to Texas. And we look forward to hanging out with you guys and breaking bread with you. You're awesome. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for standing up. You said, off air, you told me death threats, everything. But you're, you're still here. Who cares, man? I'm here to die for this country and for the truth, mainly. And yeah. I know that God is on my side. Hold on, we'll come right important. back to you. We'll come back to you. Come back to you. The article is up on Infowars.com. Here's why Hillary Clinton is running in 2020. That's the article, but buried in it. I'm going to put our own article out. Buried in the article is the poll. Will Hillary Clinton run for president in 2020? Yes, she'll run. No, she won't run. She'll be dead by then. So Drudge has his poll up there. And I'm going to stay on air now until we have our own article out. No big deal. Just our own article with the poll so I can tell listeners to go to Infowars.com and take the poll. And I'm going to get Paul to retweet it uh, as well. But I, I, I have an intention to get that poll big and actually reach our audience at Infowars.com, it's, it's in an article by Joel Gilbert when he first Friday predicted that Hillary will be running for president in 2020 and the evidence of it. We've talked to insiders. They say she is intending to do it, but I also want to create our own article um, where, where it's there, and then we put the Joel Gilbert story under it. So that's all coming up. Yo Mama's chest hair uh, is, uh, is her handle. She lives up in Chicago, and she's a Hispanic Trump supporter. And so you were telling me off air, as I asked, about all the harassment you got. People can follow you on Twitter at yo underscore mamas underscore chest underscore hair. People should follow you there. And you got your sister and her husband that got you involved in all this. Just recap for people. When you woke up, the saga, what it's been like. The, the, you said your dad is asleep with a gun because all the death threats. I mean, lay out what it's like for a Hispanic person in America who tries to support America first, prosperity, having basic immigration rules like any other country has, what you have to go through. Because we think as basic Trump supporters, we get harassed. But from what I've read and seen, uh, black Trump supporters, Hispanic Trump supporters, I mean, they get attacked. They get called white supremacist. They get fired from their jobs. They get thrown out of stores. Uh, so so, so uh, lay it all out for us. Yeah, it's very scary um, at first. Um, but, I mean, I know that they're all talk and they're just angry. And uh, that's one thing about the Mexicans is that um, they're mainly a little bit too selfish because all they care about is the immigration. They don't care about this other uh, bigger problems that are going on in the country, that if we succeed in those problems, then we can help the whole world. But no, they just want to focus on themselves and they don't even know exactly what they want. They just know that they're angry. Um, so th that's why... It, it was pretty scary. I had to take down all my social media because um, you cannot say anything about Trump. And that's, it's, that's so funny to me because, I mean, he is the president. Since when can we not support the president? And like I said, I was born here. My duty is to protect this country first. My people are the American people. I don't care what color you are. It's the idea that this beautiful country, the culture in this country is that it allows you to have your own culture. So why are we trying to switch and change all of this? We're running away from Mexico because of all the crime and all the corruption. And we want to bring this here. I, I just don't get it. This is the greatest nation in the world. And that's one thing that Mexicans should understand. But, but they've been brainwashed since Mexico. Their politicians brainwashed them. And now they're brain, brain, brainwashed here by pretty words that come from the Democrats, and you know what, and some rhino Republicans as well. So um, it, I, I hope one day they can realize that this fight, it, it's also including them, but they need to wait a little bit a little bit before uh, we can fix the whole nation, and then we can see uh, the immigration process. Well, you're amazing. We really appreciate you and your courage, and 
It'd be one thing if Trump got in and the economy didn't turn around and optimism didn't turn around and all these corrupt globalists weren't getting in trouble. But when we know how the globalists have been working to hurt the country and working around the clock to do all this, it just really makes me upset with people that buy into the hype. Uh, but trailblazers like yourself are the real leaders of the future. And you know what Mark Twain said? He said, a patriot is a scarce man or woman in the beginning, hated, scorned, and feared. But in time when the patriot succeeds, uh, the timid join him because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. So we really appreciate you. Yo underscore mamas underscore chest hair. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Oh, my gosh. Bye -bye. There's Pep. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the, the creator of Pepe says it doesn't matter fair use, doesn't matter he said trademark free, doesn't matter he just tried to get his trademark. He says you're not allowed to show that frog. So do you want to bow down to Ferry well, right now? Well, this is Keck, and he's been altered. He doesn't look like Pepe. It, it is a frog, but I mean. But I mean, obviously he can't claim name, he owns right? Kermit the Frog either. Hell, next <laughs> he'll say these are lily pads. Bob. Bang, bang, bang. Hey, hey, is, is Pepe gay? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's not gay. He's atomically correct. I'm not going to show his private parts unless you want to. <laughs> so Keck, Keck's, but Keck's, Keck's but packing? I'm still, right. I'm still protecting him from those evil chemicals. <laughs> <sighs> you're a real sweetheart. Very charming. All right, you're awesome. <laughs> I, I'm, it's right. a family show. I'm not going to make a really bad joke right now. But, hey, you're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. You too. Take care, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed every second I of it. I enjoyed having you. Like I said, I'm one of your biggest fans. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to meet you and your family. All right, folks. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. <laughs> If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. The Real Red Pill Plus, ladies and gentlemen. Our team is constantly on the lookout for newer and better ways to improve our products. That's why we're bringing you a brand new version of one of the newest fan favorite products, the Real Red Pill Plus. The Real Red Pill Plus is an all-new version of the powerhouse Preglinone product. It features the same great formula that supports your heart, brain, healthy aging process with an all-new natural caffeine boost included. A powerful Preglinone base, the Real Red Pill, has quickly become one of our fellow InfoWarriors' favorite products. Now, with an extra proprietary energy blend inside, including green tea extract, iramante leaf extract, and more, you can get that extra pick-me-up all supporting your mind and body in a healthy way. It's got all the great stuff that Real Red Pill has, but it's also got the boost in it. Get the Real Red Pill Plus at InfoWarsStore.com.